Never before had Pinkie Pie been so eager to see a party finally end. Still, she had put on her very best and very brightest hostess smile as she watched her costumed guest slowly trickle out the front door of Sugar Cube Corner. Twilight carried a sleeping spike upon her back, the two of them dressed as a dragon and knight, respectively, while Applejack herded the cutie mark crusaders. Applejack was dressed as a scarecrow, just as she did every year, while the crusaders were the three musketeers. Pinky overheard something about a sleepover at the crusaders' treehouse, but quickly became distracted by the superheroed costumed Rainbow Dash, who coaxed Fluttershy into leaving the relative safety of the bakery to head back home. Fluttershy wasn't wearing a costume, but that was okay. This was only the second year that she had actually ventured outside of her cottage on Nightmare Night after all. Pinky could always try to convince Fluttershy to wear a costume next year. As her friends dispersed into the night, Pinky faithfully remained at the door, smiling and waving. Only after the darkness had swallowed them up did Pinky let go of the smile that hurt to hold in place, the smile that she could feel cracking around the edges. Tiredly, she turned around and glanced around the bakery's first floor. It truly was a sight to behold. Glittering cobwebs hung from every corner. Paper mache ghosts lurked in the windows. And over the rafters, there crisscrossed streamers in the range of dark gem hues. Never before had one of her parties been so beautifully decorated, and as much as Pinky prided herself on her party abilities, she knew this time it had nothing to do with her. <sighs> she sighed, a long deep sigh that left her chest feeling empty. Then, after taking another admiring look around, she stripped off her own costume, a white fluffy cat, and dropped it unceremoniously onto the floor. Turning off the bakery lights, she stepped outside and shut the door behind her. The clouds gleamed a ghostly silver as they crowded the skies above Ponyville, almost completely masking Luna's full moon. Fortunately, Pinkie Pie knew Ponyville as well as she knew the back of her own hoof, and she carefully trotted along the now-hidden paths that led from Sugar Cube Corner down to Carousel Boutique. As Pinkie made her way through Ponyville, the town's houses stood dark and still. All the candy had been eaten, and all the costumes had been put away. All the foals had been put into their beds, to dream of zebras casting devilish spells and of nightmares given living pony form. Another nightmare night had almost reached its end. Almost, but not quite. The tip of Carousel Boutique's roof was the only thing truly visible as Pinky reached Rarity's home. The earth pony paused and shivered. The hour had grown late, and there was a chill that seeped into the bones. But despite the chattering in her teeth and the way her fur stood on end, the thought of turning back didn't even once cross her mind. She couldn't. This was too important. Rarity had not been at the party, and no pony missed a Pinkie Pie party. It simply wasn't done. It was barely even conceivable. Even worse than missing one of her very best friends at the party, however, was the fact that Pinky knew exactly why Rarity hadn't come. Pinky knew exactly whose fault it was. Rarity had told her a secret. Last night, they had been in the bakery, decorating for both the holiday and Pinky's party. Rarity had brought over a box of supplies, ribbons and fabrics, and all manner of crafting items from her own personal stock. And together, they worked while the hours flew by. Rarity had put up streamers, while Pinkie Pie had baked her cookies. Pinkie Pie had arranged the tablecloth just so, while Rarity provided instructions, interspersed with the latest and juiciest town gossip. For hours, they had labored to make Sugar Cube Corner shine and sparkle like a spooky jewel. And then, when they had finally finished, Rarity asked Pinky to sit down with her for a cup of tea 
and a plate of scones. Pinky didn't remember the exact words she'd said, but she thanked Rarity for coming over, for all the supplies and all the decorating. Giggling a bit, <laughs> Rarity had reached across the table and laid her hoof over Pinky's own. Pinky had grinned at Rarity, had grinned even bigger than before, that was, and Rarity had grinned back. It hurt, now, to remember that grin, to feel that keen absence of its warmth and its affection. Pinky should have known, perhaps, when Rarity's eyes darkened and when Rarity's voice trembled. Perhaps Pinky should have realized the secret that Rarity had to share. But she hadn't. She hadn't, and because she hadn't, she'd been caught by surprise. And so, Pinky had done what she had nearly always did when she didn't know what else to do. She laughed. <laughs> she laughed. A big bark of a laugh. And even though she had swallowed it down as quickly as she could, the damage had been done. She had known it instantly, too. And she had known it even without seeing the hope in Rarity's face crumble like a cold castle wall and the light in Rarity's eyes fade away like a ghost. I'm sorry, she had said in a stark tone, not sounding sorry at all, as abruptly as she stood. I didn't realize you would react. So, uh, well, no matter. I was obviously mistaken and I do apologize. And Pinky hadn't seen Rarity since. All tonight, throughout the entire party, she'd found her eyes drifting towards the front door, just in case a late party-goer happened to arrive. Every time she heard the door open, her heart leapt at the thought that it might be Rarity who had come walking in, with that dazzling smile and words of forgiveness on her lips. But Rarity never did. Now... Standing in the front of the boutique, staring up at its imposing spires as the wind howled through the empty streets of the town, Pinky hesitated. She rubbed one foreleg up and down the other, frowning thoughtfully. On the one hoof, she and Rarity really needed to talk. That's what friends were supposed to do when things weren't right. Pinky knew nothing would get better until they talked. On the other hoof... The boutique's living room windows were completely dark, and the hour had grown much later than was probably acceptable for a social visit, strictly speaking. The wind continued its lonely, whistling dirge, and Pinky wished it hadn't been so cold. It was hard to think when it was so cold. She cast her eyes around, desperate for something, anything that would ease the ache in her chest. Her prayer was answered, by a lit candle, shining dimly through the drawn curtains of the upper story window in the boutique. Rarity. For the first time since she'd left Sugar Cube Corner, Pinky smiled. Stepping forward, she rapped quickly on the boutique's front door and waited. The seconds trickled by like drops from a leaking faucet, and the door stayed shut. Pinky pressed her ear up against the door. Nothing, nothing so much as a cough or even a whisper could be heard from inside. Pinky reached for the doorknob and gave it a good pull, but the door remained stubbornly closed. Locked? Pinky frowned. But Rarity never locks her door. The earth pony backed up a few steps and stared up at the window above where the candle flickered behind the curtains and glass, reaching out to her with its promise of warmth, light, and rarity. Pinky bit her lip. Twilight had told her it was very rude to barge in on other ponies' houses, and Pinky supposed that Twilight was probably right. Twilight usually was. But still, this was important. A sort of creeping dread churned in her stomach, heavy and oppressive. And Pinky decided that this time, Twilight simply had to be wrong. With a resolute nod, Pinky trotted around the perimeter of the boutique. She kept her ears perked, 
and when she heard the sudden clatter of her own hooves against the wood, she stopped. Directly beneath her lay the door to Rarity's basement. Ages ago, Rarity had asked Applejack to come board it up so Foles wouldn't be able to lift the latch and fall down the stairs. But Pinky was prepared. She always traveled ready for any and all kinds of emergencies. And she pulled out a screwdriver she had tucked away for just such a situation. Quickly, she wedged its tip underneath the nailed down boards, using the screwdriver's handle as a lever to pry open the wooden planks one by one. The basement proved dark and stank of old rot and mildew, a suffocating stench that choked like a garrot, and Pinky tripped over mostly obscured roadblocks as she picked her way across the room. <laughs> the door leading back outside slammed shut behind her, echoing throughout the large subterrain room and Pinky stifled a yelp. Whereas before the room had been dark, now it was utterly pitch black. By memory, Pinky felt her way towards the stairs that led up to the first floor of the boutique. Still, she heard nothing except the too loud sound of her own hooves against the concrete. Pinky would have thought it unnerving had she been the type of pony to get unnerved. She breathed a sigh of relief upon reaching the door leading upstairs as she pushed it open and stumbled into the blessedly fresh air of Rarity's kitchen. But the relief was short-lived, as almost instantly a voice called out from the second floor. Who is it? Who's down there? Pinky squared her shoulders. This was it. This was her chance to make things right. Hiya, Rarity! <laughs> it's me! She called back in a voice as cheerful as possible. There was a long pause, long enough that Pinky wondered if maybe Rarity hadn't heard her. Finally, Rarity replied, You must leave the house. Now, Pinky. Her voice sounded ragged and rough, like an unpolished stone, almost as though she had been crying. I will talk to you tomorrow if you want, but right now you have to leave. Undeterred, Pinky had made a beeline for the stairs that led to the boutique's upper story. The stairs creaked under hooves with each step, and they sounded almost painfully loud in the otherwise dead silent house. I can't leave until we talk, because I know you're really upset with me, Rarity, and I don't want you to be. Oh, I'm, I'm not upset. Please, Pinky, go away. Pinky flinched as though struck, but stubbornly she pressed on. On the second floor, the door to Rarity's room was the only one closed. Hints of the candlelight peeked out into the hallway, making it look as though an unearthly halo glowed around the entire door. Pinky reached forward and placed a hoof on the doorknob, only to find that this door was locked as well. She supposed that she shouldn't be surprised. Rarity, can you come unlock the door so we can talk and make up and hug and be best friends again? Just, oh, please, just go away. It hurt. Dear Celestia, how it hurt to hear those words being spat out at her. And worse, being said in that tone. Not anger. Not exasperation, but sad, fearful. Pinky only hesitated a moment before reaching again for her trusty screwdriver. This was all her fault. Her fault that Rarity was sad. Her fault that Rarity was crying. And that meant it was up to her to make things better, no matter what it took. Apologies could come after. What is that noise? What is it you're doing out there? Coming in so we can talk. No! From the other side of the door came a series of scratching sounds, as though Rarity was scrambling for something. Don't you dare come into this room! Thank you, I'm serious! Desperation rippled in Rarity's voice, stripped bare of all of its usual genteelness, and Pinky's stomach cramped in response. Gritting her teeth, 
She forced herself to keep working on the lock. Fixing now. Apologies later. Listen to me, Pinky. The sky. He, he won't stay cloudy forever. The sky? She turned to glance with furrowed brows down the hallway. Sure enough, slight illumination trickled out the open doors of the other rooms. Spidery fingers of pale moonlight creeping along the hallway floors. A sudden slam from the other side of the bedroom door caused Pinky to jump. Whirling back around, she stared at the door, blinking, her breath coming in ragged little bursts. Maybe it was only because it was so dark that it looked like the door had splintered a little down the middle. Just a trick of the light, a shadowy illusion. Promise! Came a growl, barely rarity, barely even equine, from within the bedroom. Pinky, promise! The earth pony worked her jaw, but for once, no words came forth. She stood rooted to the carpet of the hallway, paralyzed. All she could think of was how much she wanted to see Rarity's face, to gather up Rarity within her forelegs, and yet her body utterly refused to move. I promise! Rarity's voice was even louder now, as though she was pressing right up against the door. I promise you won't unlock the door! I... I can't! I'm sorry, Rarity, but I, I can't. Pinky swallowed thickly. She felt nauseous. It's already unlocked. Another slam against the door, hard enough that the door shuddered in its jam. Still, Pinky didn't move. You <laughs> foolish... <laughs> third slam, the hardest yet, sounding like a cannon blast in an otherwise still house. Then the door cracked open, just a few inches. The smell of something like sulfur, sour and putrid, hit Pinky's senses first. She gagged on the stench and staggered back a few steps. Only then, with a bit of distance, did she notice the pair of eyes staring out at her from the small opening in the doorway? That same lovely shade of blue she knew so well, dark and deep like the ocean, and yet not quite the same. They glittered in a way Pinky had never seen before, practically pulsating with a strange and malevolent light. They stared out at Pinky, unblinking, unwavering, unnatural. Rarity's eyes, and yet somehow, not Rarity. R Rarity? Run, whispered not Rarity. <laughs> Pinky's hooves moved without conscious thought, taking the stairs two or three at a time, her heart in her throat. Behind her, she heard the bedroom door crash open. A second later, came the thuds of hooves against stairs, coming quick and fast and thundering loudly. Pinky skidded to a halt right before smashing face first into the front door of the boutique and her forehoof scrambling to the doorknob so she could... Locked. Somehow the door was locked from outside. The question of how that had happened and why crossed her mind for the slightest of moments until the smell of hot sulfur sent her sprinting once again. She whipped around a corner and headed for the kitchen. If she could just reach the basement, she could leave the same way she had come in. She could escape and make a run for Twilight, and she would know what to do. Skidding across the kitchen's linoleum, Pinky threw herself against the slightly ajar door that led to the basement. She tumbled down the stairs, and as the door slammed shut behind her, once again, Pinky found herself plunged into total darkness. With agonizing slowness, she waded through the sea of junk scattered along the basement floor, stumbling over a box here, tripping over a raised pipe there. Finally, she reached the door that led back outside, and she pushed up against it. It didn't budge. Pinky shoved harder, putting her whole weight into the effort, but it wouldn't give an inch. It's magic. Pinky whirled around, 
near the top of the stairs, directly in front of the still shut door, Pinky could see a pair of gleaming blue eyes. She shouldn't have been able to see those eyes. She shouldn't have been able to see anything in the dark basement. But there they were, like twin lighthouses, threatening danger. The doors, that is. It's magic meant to keep me trapped inside. <laughs> she doesn't like it much when I come out to play. Pinky pressed her body against the basement wall, her sweat cold and clammy against the concrete, and tried to control her breathing. Stand up tall, nice, slow breaths. Stand up tall and don't look away. But now you're trapped too, aren't you, Pinky? <laughs> she never thought of that. Foolish, really. Who, who are you? Pinky managed to stammer out, the words scratching her throat like thorns. Now that would be telling, wouldn't it? And I do know how strongly you feel about keeping secrets. <laughs> Let's just say I'm an example of why you oughtn't underestimate the powers of the elements of harmony or the perils. Keep breathing. Just keep breathing. As quietly as she could, Pinky began edging her way around the perimeter of the room. Her gaze never faltered. Her gaze never left those glowing eyes. And in turn, those horrible eyes never left hers. Stay standing. Baby steps. One hoof after the other. Generosity is so very last year, darling. Survival of the fittest is what's in. What's fresh? What's now? And I'm afraid only one of us shall be surviving this night. Pinky said nothing. She simply continued her slow crawl, back pressed against the sturdy, comforting concrete, until she finally found what she had been searching for. Instead of rough concrete behind her, it was smooth, cold glass. Not quite perfect, perhaps, but good enough. At least she'd hoped it'd be good enough. No response, hmm? No quip, no pun, no silly little joke. After a pause, perhaps meant for Pinky to respond, the eyes began descending the stairs. Very well. Then we'll have to play a different game, I suppose. The doorway was open now, unobstructed, but Pinky kept her attention locked on the blue eyes that seemed to be floating in midair. Slowly... Deliberately, almost languidly, the eyes approached her, tracking her, stalking her. Slow, deep breaths. Keep breathing. Just keep breathing. Suddenly, the eyes were gone, like some pony had blown out a candle. Pinky strained to peer through the darkness all around her to get some hint as to where not Rarity might have gone. But she saw nothing, heard nothing. She had to fight down the urge to bolt for the door. Instead, she stood motionless, holding her breath and listening intently. My poor dear Pinky, so lost, so confused. Not Rarity's voice sounded as though it came from nowhere and from everywhere and Pinky's head hurt from how mixed up she felt. Stubbornly, she locked her knees to stop them from shaking and did her utmost to ignore the pounding of her heart. And then she smelt it, the sulfur. She gagged when the stink of it hit her, but she didn't move. She didn't flinch. She waited quietly, nervously, still listening for a cough or sneeze or heavy breathing, something, anything. And then her tail started violently twitching. Pinky leapt forward. Less than a second later, she heard the crash of a mirror shattering into a hundred little shards, followed by a high yelp of pain. Wasting no time, Pinky dashed towards the stairs, 
only tripping once along the way. Before she managed to reach the door, she threw it open and blinked rapidly as the moonlight from the kitchen assaulted her eyes. Now autopilot on, she headed for the second floor, for Rarity's bedroom. She panted heavily as she ran, thick saliva coating her throat, tearing through the shadowy house with its two long halls. Her heart hammered against her ribcage, and her blood pounded in her ears like a drum. But even through all that, it was impossible to miss the sound of the thing that was not rarity, as down below it clamored back into the kitchen. Pinky found the scattered remains of the door in Rarity's bedroom, lying in the hallway, and leapt over its splintered corpse and into the room beyond. The candle in the window sill still burned, and long thin shadows danced along the walls and floor. Pinky's eyes scanned quickly across the bedroom, seeking, searching, for anything that might be useful. Bed, dressers, table, chair. Eventually, but perhaps inevitably, her gaze fell upon the tiny flickering flame of the candle. Just a second later, she was joined by those wicked soulless eyes. And for the first time, Pinky actually got a look at her pursuer. A huge shadow stood over two ponies tall, with a vaguely canine head and a broad, powerful body. Those blue eyes shone hard and cold as diamonds. The corners of the shadow's massive jaw were pulled back and up, an ugly parody of a grin, until finally, it noticed the candle held between Pinky's front hooves. You... You're bluffing. You wouldn't dare hurt a rarity. The shadow sounded hesitant, slightly unsure. Pinky took a step forward. You're not rarity. The shadow licked its jaws, a strangely contemplative gesture. Perhaps not. It lowered its head so that they were now eye to eye. And perhaps I was wrong. After all, you've already hurt rarity haven't you pinky frowned it was a trick and she knew it was a trick but the trick worked its poison and all at once the events of last night rushed back to her the dark quiet of sugar cube corner tea gossip and giggles restrained just enough to avoid waking the twins rarity's hoof on hers heavy and warm rarity's eyes Eager, brilliant, not hard or cold in the least. The secret, the laugh, that terrible look on Rarity's face, of something breaking, of something dying, followed by the sudden stiff formality, and an ache deep in Pinky's chest, like a maelstrom sucking down all the joy, as Pinky had watched her friend walk right out that door. Across the bedroom, the shadow didn't move, neither forward to attack nor backwards to retreat. It just stood there, staring, waiting, waiting patiently, like a cat playing with a mouse. Swallowing hard, Pinky took another step forward, holding the candle like a sword at the ready. I never meant to hurt her. I'd never, ever, ever hurt one of my friends on purpose, especially not Rarity. Your lies will do nothing for you. I hope you realize that. I'm not lying. That's why I came here tonight, you know? To say I'm sorry and make things better. Lies! You, you heard everything I had to say and you laughed at me! Her, at her... You were cruel and you were heartless. Pinky's ears twitched and she took a deep breath. Still, her heart raced, quicker than she had ever guessed it could. And still, her breathing sounded too ragged in her ears. But the fear, while still present, was different now. Deeper and impossibly even scarier. Pinky had never been a pony to think before she spoke to plan out what she would say or how she'd say it, but she knew whatever she had to say next had to be exactly right. What she said next mattered more than anything else she had ever said, 
and it was not just for her own sake. So, she used those precious few moments of silence to think and plan and offer a wordless prayer to whatever or whoever might be listening. The candle between her hooves felt as though it weighed as much as a boulder. Finally, looking straight into those blue eyes, Pinky whispered, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry I hurt you, Rarity. <coughs> I was just surprised, okay? I, I was surprised and sometimes my mouth kind of reacts before my brain can think up something smart to say because sometimes I'm not a very smart pony and, and I'm really super sorry. Suddenly, the shadow's grin came back, a bit smaller and less cocky than before. You're only sorry now, of course. Don't think that I don't know. <laughs> but it's a little too late. It won't save you. I never thought saying I'm sorry would save me. The grin grew larger, becoming a smirk, and the shadow slunk forward. A pitiful little candle isn't going to stop me. You've no idea what I can do. No idea what I truly am. When I'm finished with- Last night, you told me that you loved me. That's what's gonna save me. At that, the shadow froze. Perhaps it was simply Pinky's imagination, a trick of the dimming light. But she could swear that the shadow's eyes softened just a bit, became just a little less stone. Are you quite certain about that, darling? The words were soft, barely audible, still spoken in that gravelly tone, still slightly mocking, brutal as a sledgehammer, and precise as a scalpel, and yet, and yet. If you really wanted to hurt me, you could have done it already. This whole time we've been talking, you could have done something, but you didn't. It's gotta mean something. Pinky hazard a glance down at the candle at its warm and glowing flame, before returning her gaze to those deep blue eyes across from her. But even if it doesn't, even if I'm wrong, one thing I'm absolutely positively sure about, I'm not gonna hurt you. Not now, not ever. The shadow shook its head, slowly, almost sadly. Pinky didn't know what that meant. She decided it was best not to think too much about that. Pinkie Pie smiled gently into those blue eyes. You want to know why, Rarity? The shadow didn't speak. It only just kept staring. Because I love you too, said Pinkie, leaning forward to blow out the candle. <sighs> the room fell into darkness.